Okay, good morning. Good morning. We, um, oh, you know what? I gotta get something. Wait, stay, hold that thought. How are you, Shelly? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Am I gonna get to change my name? Huh? <laughs> how do I get to change you my go, name? Go to, go to the three changes. dots. You see where the three dots oh, okay. are? Okay, right? okay. Yeah, I'll do it another time. Three dots in the upper right, and you can have rename there. I kind of like this one. We'll just call you... Uh, Yes, she is. For this class, it's fine. For, for, for begin, so I want to just I want to dedicate our learning today. Today, um, Elian Elian is observing Yeritzite for her brother Yaakov Ben Mordechai, Nisham Shav and Aliyah, um, and uh, I know that she always watches on record because she works works. Elian's at Sadekis, as we all know, so she works and volunteers in the hospital on Tuesdays, but she always, always watches and she even tells me, she quotes to prove to me that she watches, like she needs to prove to me, but I know that she does, but she actually cites things that we talk about, but I wanted to make sure that we dedicated the learning today. Uh, Ilya Nishmas, again, her brother, Yaakov ben Mordechai and Shom Shehav and um, I'll just tell you a quick, cute story before we begin. My wife, who's now en route to the States with Eliana, coming home for Pesach, um, they're on the plane now. They're on the way home. And you got to love El Al that out of nowhere decides, hey, you know what? You don't have to go to Newark. We're going to send you to Kennedy. You it. know, not a big deal for you, right? And they couldn't care less. It's unbelievable. The, the, if, if you read on some of the frummy websites, like Yeshiva World or on Dan's Deals, it's hysterical, the uproar. And let's say people who left their cars in Newark and now they have to get from JFK to Newark. Yeah, what's a big deal? Yeah, but you know what the problem is? They stopped the daytime flight from Newark. So well, they, that, can't, they lost their slot apparently, and that well, it is because I know and we also had a flight change, but yes, and they got so and they, they, they got bumped, and, and 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 then and the prices are exorbitant. So if you want to change it, whatever, it's just LL, you know. So people ask me, why do I always fly, fly LL? I say because I pay for the abuse. Um, um, I tried, I tried to Twitter shame them. I tried, like they, they don't care. They closed their American call center, so they have no idea. Anyway, that's not that's not the story. But my wife, so she went this past Shabbos. Um, Eliana's seminary. So the, they're very smart. The last thing that they do before vacation is they take them on a Shabbaton to Tzfat. And then when they come back from Tzfat, they have a Mishmar all night learning Saturday night through Sunday morning with uh, sunrise davening at the Kotel. They come back from Tzfat, they learn all night in the, in the Midrashah, and then they learn, um, <clears throat> then they go to the Kotel. So these kids are like super exhausted so they can go home and whatever. But we have an ongoing thing. My wife always says she wants to go to Tzfat for Shabbos. And you guys know me pretty well. And you could probably imagine that is not my cup of tea. I'm such a Litvak that like, I, I can't handle all the weird people. I can't, it's just not, it's just not my thing. So it was like, Basher min hashamayim, that she should be able to experience Tzfat. And she had the most incredible, uplifting, inspiring, wonderful learning Shabbos. And I also did. And I was so happy not to be there. Uh, but she said that in one of the lectures that they, they spoke of is that, you know, we were talking about rabbinic disposition, is that the, there, there were certain women there that on Tisha B'Av, after midday, they would start cleaning their whole houses. And the reason they would clean their houses is because they knew that Mashiach was coming. And when Mashiach was coming, we had to have a clean house for Mashiach. And I truly believe it. By the way, that's real Amuna. We and we say it every day, an Imam and Bamuna Shalema, but you know, they were like, yeah, an Imam, you know, you know. But not this week, because you know, I have tickets to the game next week. So if you could hold off a couple of weeks, that would be really good. Um, so these so one of the husbands came back to the woman and said, you know, the rabbi said you're not allowed to do this type of work on Tisha B'av. So the wife said to the to the husband, you need to get yourself a new rabbi because we're cleaning the house with Tisha B'av because Mashiach is coming. So um, there's something something to learn from everything. Um what I want to share with you today, if you saw the sheet, I'll put it on the screen. It is lengthy. It is lengthy. It's not like a typical Haggadah tidbit. I wanted to do something a little bit more um, intense, but it answers a very, very important question, which may or may not come up. And again, it's worthy of discussion. Um, so let me, let me put this on the screen and let's go. Okay, everybody sees it? Okay, so this is the uh, the Beis Halevi on Chumash, which is Rabbi Yosef Dov Halevi Salavechik, and I have the dates here, 1820 to 1892. Now, this is not, when you say, oh, Rabbi Salavechik, or Salavechik, Yeshiva University Salavechik, the answer is yes and no. This is his namesake. So the Beis Halevi, 
the base Levi had children. One of his, his most famous son was known as Reb Chaim Salavich, Reb Chaim Brisker. Reb Chaim Brisker had two sons, at least, and one of them was Rav Yosef Zev, Rav Velvel Brisker, Velvel Salavechik, and Rav Moshe Salavechik. Rav Moshe Salavechik ultimately went to America, and Rav Velvel, his, his family ended up in Eretz Yisrael. So when you hear about, let's say, Brisk Yeshiva in Israel, that's from Rav Velvel's side. And Rav Moshe came to America, and he had a son, Rav Yosheber Salavechik, Joseph B. Salavechik. So as a matter of fact, the elementary school that I attended, which is now defunct, was called Yish YRMS, Yeshiva Rabbi Moses Salavechik, which was located on West 185th Street in the Heiligestadt of Washington Heights. So it was actually in between Yeshiva University and breweries. Yeshiva University actually owns the building now, um, and it's part of their theater or whatever they have there. So that's just who we're talking. So this is the Beis Halevi, who is sort of the, the scion of the Salavechik dynasty, and we have here this piece, and let's just read through it. And you'll see the question comes up right away, and it's very much related to the Haggadah and Pesach. So, he got it to Labincha Bayama Hule more, but Avurza Asa Shemli, but says him in Mitzrayim, a Hila Kala Osa Yedeha, a Shamartas Kuka, Azos the Mada, Mia Mimimimimimimimimimimim. In Parsha's bow, so as part of all the special Torah readings that we have, it's found in the Tfilin, but we also say that he got it to Labincha is the prime mitzvah on Pesach. You have to tell over the story of the Exodus to the next generation. And you have to tell them because God did this. And of course, you'll recognize this, that this is one of the answers that we give to the sons at the Haggadah. Because of Rashi, the Pasuk Zehu Tshuva Leben HaRashi. Rashi says, of course, that this is the answer to the wicked son. So we know the answer. The Russia asked the question, what is this to you? And you can give every vart in the world that you learned on this. It's you, it's not me. And, and it says, and of course, you have to, let's, let's be politically correct. You have to blunt his teeth. Um, the, the proper way of saying, you have to knock out his teeth. So does it mean that we condone violence? Or what does that mean? You can have all kinds of conversation. So, that's, but that's the answer. And we say that, you know what? Yeah, you, you, you excluded yourself. That means that had you been there, you would not have been redeemed. Very uh, welcoming sort of answer. I'm sure that does a lot for the whole family dynamic. Okay. Vihine. He says, and even though that, of course, you have to blunt his teeth and you have to tell him that you would not have been redeemed, still... The answer to his question, we still have to tell him. In other words, on a simple level, when someone asks the question, let's say somebody doesn't know anything, you have to say to them, God took us out of Egypt. And because of this, that's why we're doing all of X, Y, and Z. If at base value, if he doesn't really know what it's about, why is he called a Russia? In other words, since when does ignorance make someone evil? Now, we got lots of ignorant people around. There's no question about it. And I don't think we would definitely, we would not put them in the category of evil. We would put them, let's say, Tinok Shanishba. They don't know better. They didn't have education. And here, if he's at base, he's asking, like, what is this all about? So, and I understand we have all kinds of different interpretations of Shatan, but from base value from the Pasuk, he's saying, what is this? Why does that make him a Russia? And if we're going to fault him that why he doesn't know and the fact, if his ignorance is a crime, then who's really guilty of the crime? The guilty party is really the parent. The parent who didn't educate him properly. So he says, here's what, what the Beis HaLevi says. He says, what's, simply speaking, what is the base of his wickedness? 
is that he says, Lachem, what is this business to you? Meaning excluding himself, which means that he doesn't want any road to Lachayim HaMitzvah. He doesn't want to fulfill any commandment as long as he doesn't understand the reason. So this is already something that we can relate to. Uh, you know, there are certain mitzvahs that we have which have a mazel. Some things are really, really good. You know, like we, we like the, those, we like tzedakah. We like Purim, we like Hanukkah, you know, we like cheesecake. But the other things, mm, shatnas, I don't get it. Doesn't mean, you know, Tish above, nah, it doesn't speak to me. And if we don't, <clears throat> if we can't relate to it, certainly if we don't understand the reasons behind it, then we don't do it. So the fact that you say, why did God command us? Just uttering those words, then it puts you in the category of a Russia, right? Because a wise son, if he accepts it from his father, because that's what we're supposed to do. So the classic, why, why do I have to do this? Because I told you so. How many times have we said that to our children? Why do I have to do it? Because I told you so. Isn't that enough? So God is saying the same thing to us. Now, by the way, that doesn't mean that we cannot ask the reasons, but the reason should not be the sole driving force behind performance of a mitzvah or non-performance. It's good to have a tam. It's good to have a reason, which is, by the way, what do we call it? Tam mea mitzvahs. And you want to make a play on the words. Tam is also flavor. Tam means reason and tam is flavor. <laughs> And we could say, oh, maybe by understanding the reasons, it gives us a bit of a flavor to the mitzvah and lets us enhances our performance, but it shouldn't be the driving force behind our performance. So Gam came, the Gam kodem tam mitzvah, He says, when it comes to mitzvah, mitzvah means commandment, and which means the fact that God commanded it is enough of a reason for me to do it. Everything that comes after that will help enhance my understanding, whatever. But if I have to accept this is what God commanded of me, that's what we have to do. Because if it was commanded, then it must be that it's right. So, and he quotes from a Pasuk, Shema Bani Musar Avicha, Val Titosh Torah Of course, the famous Pasuk in Mishle, you have to listen to the Musar of your, of your father. Don't forsake your mother's Torah. If your father knows the Tom and he tells him, even better. So he says, what's happening here is that the Russia is called a Russia because he is basing his performance on his understanding or an agreement with the reason of the mitzvah. If he doesn't know the reason of the mitzvah, that is not good enough for him. A righteous person says, it's a mitzvah, God commanded it, Torah he, or that I have to learn it, I have to do it. And that's what makes him a righteous person versus a non-righteous person. Okay, so using that as a base, we're going to see something really, really phenomenal here. Omnam Yosir Nira. The Haparsha. And this is like some pretty heavy words here. So this is, this is it's going to get a little bit dicey here. Um, and you have to understand the Beis Halevi living in Eastern Europe, <coughs> and they were battling um, the period of the Haskalah and people who were trying to enlighten and say that, you know, Torah is not made of Shemayim, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, again, look at the dates, 1820 to 1892 in Eastern Europe. We all know what was happening then. So it seems that the Torah is dealing with a Ben Gadol Malumad, Hayadeya Enyin Yitzis Mitzrayim Vanisim Shinasawas. It would seem that the Torah is talking about somebody who's knowledgeable, knows about the, knows, who doesn't know the story of the Exodus. Raklipo natal etzad haminim, v'ha'apikarsim, v'ha'mishakimim, v'omrim ta'amim lemitzvot. He says, but maybe this is a person whose inclination is towards people who are critics. Again, an old-time apikoris, like a real non-believer, who say that, you know, we have to know the reason for the mitzvot. V'achereshi amtziu eizotam she'enu shaykh b'zmanim elu yomru, they say, oh, the reason doesn't apply anymore today, so we don't have to do the mitzvah anymore today. Now, I know we've all had this inclination, right? So let's go back to, if I'm just looking down my uh, screen here, I see some of these boxes, one day yontif, I don't know who that is, um, but, you know, what's the whole reason of having two days of yontif? 
today, you're going to tell me that today in the United States of America, we don't know exactly when the day the Pesach is. Of course we don't. We don't doubt to the millisecond. I, so why don't we get rid of it? So that's exactly the approach we do not take because we have to remember that there, is a, there was a law that was made and even if we think the reason doesn't apply today, nevertheless, if the enactment was made, we have to stick to it. And that's what we do. Ukumokata, and he says, ha reform, ha meshubashim bedatam, ha nostim zman laha mitzvah, v'omre mitzvah zu haisa shayechas az baosa zman, mesibus shebodem ilibam, lo bezman azeh, o rak baosa makam baosa medina, lo be medina acheres, kayyota bezeh bedivrei hani lozim, very strong words. He says, there are people who are reforming, now he's talking about the reform, but also reformers, who think that, no, they're like, yeah, Exodus, Egypt, it happened then, but what does it have to do with us now? It doesn't apply to us now. We don't. It only applies in that place, in that time. Nowadays, what, what shaykhs does it have to us? He says, He goes, I, I don't want to get into like their, 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 their business. You know, he says, I don't, I don't want to dwell on that. And here he's going to prove of how we understand that this is not the case. Vihine mitzvah's Pesach, lechura. So if I would ask you this certain question, and you could do this at your Siddharm, why do we celebrate Pesach? What's the answer that you're going to get? Anyone, please, anyone jump in. What's the answer you're going to get? Remember the Exodus. Okay, what, what is the Exodus? From Egypt. Okay, not the Exodus from like, you know, town, everybody like leaving. So I mean, so, so so let's 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 polish that up a little bit. Why were they in Egypt? As slaves. Oh, so somebody enslaved us. Somebody named Paro Melak Mitzrayim. He enslaved us. We suffered. We cried. God heard our cries. God did a million like miracle things. Took us out, and then we became a nation. And ultimately, after quite a bit of detouring, we made it into the land of Israel. There, you have just fulfilled the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzhak Mitzrayim at its basis level. So that's the answer, right? That's why we keep Pesach. Ukimvur b'yalkut, and the Zohar HaKadosh. See, like the, the Beis Levi quoting the Zohar, which is pretty important. She'bezeh ha'heru Yisrael bito lava de Zohar Shalom Mitzrayim. Shahiyo ha'mitzrayim ovdim l'teleh. Ukimvur b'sah pa'pasach he'nizbech ha'sovat Mitzrayim l'nehem. So the first, one of the first acts they had to do was they had to bring the carbon Pesach. And we knew that this was an animal that the Egyptians worshipped. So they actually had a concern. It's part of the book, like, wait a minute, uh, how, how do we do this? Like, we're going we're gonna to worship, we're going to kill their gods in front of them, and we're going to worship them? That's the joke that we tell at the Seder, you know. What did the Egyptians say when the Jews brought the carbon Pesach? They said, oh my God. See what I did there? Uh, and they made sure that they would kill their gods and they would roast it, but not break a bone to make sure to show that the bones would be cast outside. And they would roast it while it was whole. It was such a display that the Egyptians would see, look, they're roasting our God whole. They would know that our gods are powerless. That's one version in the Medrash. And the Medrash says, Hashem commanded Moshe to bring the carbon Pesach. Moshe Rabbeinu answered, Wait, we're going to shecht and roast their God in front of them and they're not going to stone us and kill us? God says, by your life. You will not leave, the, the nation will not leave here until you shecht their God, their idol worship, their deity right in front of their own eyes. So certainly we would say Pesach is not a mitzvah we don't understand. It's not Shadnes. It's not Chazir. It's not pork. 
שכן החייב לעשות סך, הרי שהמצרים הכבידו שיבוד כושר כל כך על ישראל בחומר, ובלבנים, וקלקלו על סוף מנהר של סם, עד שגרמו על ידי שיבודם הקשה, שכמה מישראל הוכרחו מתוך הנצם לעבוד עבוד זר להם, שלהם. The Egyptians oppressed us so hard with slavery, and they subjugated the Jews to so much pressure that it's understandable that some people cracked and they ended up assimilating, they ended up worshiping the foreign gods of the Egyptians. Who come out the east of it, Medrash? Halalo avodei zarav, halalo avdei avodei zarav. The reference here is that when the Jewish people came to the sea, and God told the angel split the sea, and He said, "Wait, separate between the Egyptians and the Jews." And the angel's like, "Well, which is which?" Because they're both idol worshippers. Just to give you an idea of the level that the Jewish people were on at the time. Vashem isbarach nokam nikmas amo. And God, he avenged the people and he met out justice with the Egyptians and on their gods. And he took the Jewish people to freedom with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And he took them out of the tumor, out of the, out of the, of the spiritual defilement. And he dragged them away from their Avodah Zarah, from their God. And he brought them under the wings to be his nation. So at that moment, when God saves you, and that's the time when you have to get rid of those foreign deities. Drag, take out, but it's like, Drag yourselves away from that God. Drag your hands away from that God and take the set. We're going to the next page. So therefore, each time when we get to this period when the miracle happened, so we have a chov hakodesh lahakriv hapesach laharos bitol avodazora shalom mitzrayim. So we have to then have the special carbon pesach to show how God nullified and proved that their gods were nothing that we know who the real king is and all dominion belongs to Hashem and no one else so then it comes along this Russia the wicked son and he says what is this I, you tell me that every year you have to you have to have this service because you got rid of the Avodah Zarah then and every year you're doing it. He says, well, what is this, Gomer? I understand that that happened. I, I, get, I get the mitzvah. It's a real mitzvah. At a time when there was a Vodazara and the Jewish people were being drawn into it and God had to save them. I get that. I, I, absolutely. That makes sense. But now you're going to tell me, now who believes in Avodah Zarah anymore? Who worships animals anymore? It doesn't exist. So you're going to tell me this is how you honor God? This is Kovat Lashem? So the Russia is coming from a very shrewd point of view and says, what is this to you? Meaning, it doesn't apply anymore. What are you wasting your time for? He's saying it, he's, he's couching it in such a way that he says, this avoda, meaning this avoda is usually is a service. What is the point of this service? Bringing the carbon Pesach? That's not serving God. No, you have to serve God the way he wants now, not the way back then. And by the way, you'll see that any, not any, but many times when ritual innovations have been introduced, um, there are fads that didn't last, um, you know, because people get tired of it. And if, you, if it only applies because it's working at that minute, then you're going to say, oh, you know what? No real applies. We'll, we'll worship God a different way. <laughs> what do you need the carbon Pesach for? What do you need to do all this, this Seder stuff? I understand then, but now it doesn't apply. It, does, it has no applicability in today's day and age. And he actually 
clothes himself in the garb of a righteous person by saying, I believe in God. I just don't think this is the way to serve God. Today's day and age, that's not the way to serve God. And he says, now we find so many people who are creating these new methods and it goes based on whatever they feel is, 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 is rolling around in their intellect and that's what drives their worship, not the fact that God commanded. He says, that's why the Pasuk immediately after, when he says, what is this labor to you? What is this ritual to you? What's the answer? You have to say, there's a carbon Pesach. Why? Because God, God passed over the houses of the Jewish people when he struck Mitzrayim, of course, in the plague of the Makas uh, Bechoros. That's not the answer to the Russia. Now, by the way, the next Pasuk says it, but when we say to the Russia, we don't say, we say, because God passed over our houses. So why not? When you hear apicursus, when you hear things where people are trying to take you astray from traditional thought of Judaism, you have to strengthen your heart with emuna with faith, so that those foreign ideas don't go into your heart. And therefore, as soon as the Torah tells us, as soon as you hear what the Russia says, you say, you do about carbon Pesach. You don't say, you tell to them. This is, this is an Amir that's directly to you, and to strengthen your heart, so that none of the words will enter your house. And therefore, the Haggadah says, that's why it says, whatever that unusual phrase means, blunt his teeth, knock out his teeth. And you say, because of this, God did for me when we came out of Egypt. And in this phrase, we say, because of this, Hashem did for me when we came out of Egypt, when I came out of Egypt. This is an answer and a contradiction to any of his claims. And of course, it's right. It is true that the reason why they did the carbon Pesach in Egypt is, as we mentioned, that we had to destroy their God, the God that was attracting many of our own, and therefore we had to make a display of it. And that's a good reason. And I asked earlier, what's the reason for Pesach? Oh, because Exodus, etc. However, there's something new that the Russia does not realize. We say Pesach, Matzah, Maror, and we even say it in the Haggadah. Why do we do it? Oh, so if you ask any child of three, why do we eat Matzah on Pesach? Because when they left Egypt and they didn't have time to bake the bread and it didn't rise, ba, 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 ba. but apparently the Yemenites had more time to rise. Uh, we didn't. That's why they have that lafa. And the that, that should be fine. One day, one day. And the Pesach, because of the, you know that God passed over the houses of the Jews, or Moror, because the, the lives were so bitter. And that's the reason, right? Ostensibly, that's the reason why we do it, right? Basil Levy says something incredible. He says, That is not the main reason why we perform the mitzvah. So in other words, if you're sitting at your seder and you ask someone, ask a child at the table, why do we eat matzah? And they give you the whole spiel and they even like put it on the shoulder, run around. You say, that's a really nice story, but that's not the reason why we eat matzah. You're going to like put everybody into shock. Like, what, what are you talking about? Okay. Look what he says next. And that's not why the mitzvah came about. 
Mutal aleinu hachov lekaim lasos mitzvah zu velonia kafoi tova. The reason is there to enhance our performance of an already commanded mitzvah, and that we shouldn't be those are what's called kafoi tova, people who reject good that is done. People who are it's the anti hakara satov. Hakara satov is recognition of good. Kafoi tova is those who deny good that's done to them. He says, When we say Nahagara, why do we eat matzah? We hold it up. It's almost at the end. You know, we get to that part, you know, like you're getting close to eating, by the way. Pesach, matzah, marar. That's when people start to rush a little bit because like, okay, we, we sat through like my kid that just came back from Israel and I sat through the four hour sheets um, of that. Okay, now I'm hungry. So um, <clears throat> why? We say, oh, because they didn't have time to, to bake the bread. He says, that's just a reason. It's a reason that enhances our performance. But the main principle, the founding principle of why we do the mitzvah, it's not because of that. Because the Torah precedes the world. So there is this notion. It says, the Gemara says that God, his stakal bel raisa bari alma. God looked into the Torah and created the world. So there's apparently a, this, this tremendous wisdom in the Torah that predates. The Torah is not a history book. Oh, and because that happened, that's why we do it. No, no, no. The Torah preceded everything. Vagam kodam ha'olam haisa Torah. And the, the world, since the world came after the Torah, vahayiksivba matzos, mitzvahs matzah. And there was a mitzvah to eat matzah in the Torah. And this is where it gets you. This is always a thing. We know that Avram Avinu and the Avos, we have this notion that they kept all of the Torah and the Torah wasn't given yet. So how could they pre-keep the Torah? How could they keep the Torah if it wasn't given yet? Vim Kain, who belayel test vav benisan, achal Avraham matzah umara. Afagav de az haya korim galos mitzrayim. Valkarchach mitzvahs e... Matzos, sorry. Matzos elu, lo nitz mechul megul. You could say mitzos or matzos. Megulas mitzrayim, rakul lehepach. The mitzchus mitzvos pesach, matzah mara shuyesh belayla hazos nitz mecha gulasam in mitzrayim belayla zu. He says we have everything backwards. It's not that the reason why we eat matzah mara is because of what happened on the fifteenth. No, it's because of the mitzvah of eating matzah that was commanded in the Torah, which precedes the world, that's why the Geula was able to happen then, okay? So for instance, we go back to Parshas Vayera. It's one of my favorite Rashi's in all of Chumash. We go back to Parshas Vayera and the Malachim, they come down to Sodom. They come down to Sodom and what happens? Lot goes out and he greets the angels and you can look this up. It's one of the shorter Rashi's in Chumash. And it says, umatsos, umatsos of, I can't, I can't talk. Umatsos of they come, they sit. He says, wash your hands. And it says that he baked for them matzahs and they ate. What does Rashi say there? Rashi says two words. Pesach haya. Pesach haya. Rashi beferish on Chomish in Parshas Vayera. Look it up. Pesach Haya. We have a tradition that Yaakov, uh, that Yitzchak Avinu was born on Pesach. The Zohar says that the, the, the story of Yaakov and Esav and Parshas told those of receiving the blessing and deceiving that took place on the night of Pesach. And that's why he wanted to do so. And so much so that people say that because of that, there's a minute to give your children a bracha at the Seder, even if it's not a Friday night. This year it happens to be on a Friday night, but uh, even if it was on a, a different night of the week, you should still give your children, again, to talk about that. Now, what do you mean Pesach and Yaakov, Yitzchak was born on Pesach? What? There was no Pesach. No, 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 no. That's the base of Levi says, you're, 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 you're reading it wrong. There was a mitzvah, there was a Pesach holiday. And on the Pesach holiday, you have to have Matzah and Mara, which Abraham did and Lot did and Yitzchak. And maybe because of that holiday, that's why the Jews were able to have Geula. That's our answer to the to the wicked son. We don't say, oh, because I left Egypt, I do the commandment. We say the opposite. 
that because of these mitzvos, that's why the Exodus took place. It's not, he says, when we look at mitzvahs in the Torah, we, we often get it confused, right? It's not because of the reason that's why the mitzvah takes place. No, the mitzvah is there. The mitzvah is a commandment. God saw us to it that there will be certain commandments in the Torah. And as the commandments come, maybe to help enlighten us to understand how to perform them, why to perform them, when to perform them, we have reasons. But the reasons are not why the mitzvah exists. The mitzvah does not exist because of the reasons. The reasons are just enhancements. So because of the commandment to eat Pesach, Matzah, and Marah, Therefore, they were merited to have a geula, the redemption. And also, that's why their bread didn't rise. And also because of the mitzvah that we had that night that was in existence for generations and, and thousands and thousands of years, right? The Exodus was in 2448. So for 24 or 48 years until then, there was a mitzvah of Pesach. And because of that, we were able to defeat their gods. That's how it is with all mitzvahs. So therefore, when the Russia comes and he says, no, no, I believe in God. No, no, of course I believe in God. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, 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 of course, believe in God. I would never say that. I don't believe in God. But, I mean, it doesn't apply today. So what are we saying to him? No, because he's saying if there's no more reason, there's no more mitzvah, we say, no, 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 no. The mitzvah is always. The mitzvah predates the reason. The mitzvah has nothing to do with the reason. The reason sometimes helps, comes as a, as a result of the fact that the mitzvah was in existence. The mitzvah itself, the commandment, that's a chok. Why God put that as a mitzvah, we don't know. We don't know the real, true reason. And therefore, it lasts forever without any interruption whatsoever. Um, so this is, um, let me just stop this for a second. Let me see everybody. This is what we call a, uh, for lack of a better word in, in English, we call it a yesodas de capis, right? That makes sense, yesodas de. Um, it's a fundamental um, foundational piece of understanding and how we look at Torah and how we look at mitzvahs. It turns everything on its head the way we had it. It's not that, oh, because that's what happened and that's how we have the mitzvah. Because then you have the question, wait a minute, why did Lot do it? Why did Avram do it, right? Why did he mention all these things? What, what does that mean that the Avos kept kol ha-Torah kula? It means that God, in the Torah, which predates the world, the Torah has in it certain commandments. And if we feel they don't apply today, well, that doesn't mean anything because God saw to it that those commandments would exist. Sometimes we have reasons to understand those commandments and it helps us with their performance, but it's not the sole reason that we actually perform the mitzvahs. We do the mitzvah, it's very simple. And, and, and people make the mistake all the time. They say, what does mitzvah mean? Mitzvah means good deed. Mitzvah does not mean good deed. Mitzvah means commandment because I said so. And the fact that God said so, that's enough of a reason for us to do it. If we have other things and we should be Dorsh and Tami and Mitzvahs. We should look for reasons. And I, again, I'll go back to the play on the words. I think it's important to have Tami and Mitzvahs, that if we understand the reasons for the Mitzvahs, it gives us Tam, it gives us a taste, a flavor of helping enhance our performance. It, it, we definitely do things better when we understand what's going on. And by the way, as we're constantly evolving and constantly learning, we're always trying to enhance our performance and understand better. That's what we're constantly learning. And we see new things every year. We see the same parishes every year, but we see new, new insights. Uh, new words that we hadn't seen before, we didn't notice before, new connections. And every year Pesach is different because we want to see something new and we, we, we relate it to our lives. And that this is all to help us perform them better. But ultimately speaking, from a true faith point of view, God commanded it, we have to perform it no matter what. And therefore, these arguments of the Russia, no matter how much you couch them looking like a righteous person saying, no, I believe in God, I just only got advice today, those fall off right away because that's not the reason why we do them. So this is a, again, this is a seminal piece from the Beis HaLevi. It's found in Parshas Bo. Um, really, really important. And it's really a lot to think about. So um, it's, a, it's a neat question. Like you can ask people um, at the Seder, you could show them that Rashi and Chumash and you say, wait a minute, 
um, if the reason why we eat matzah is because of Exodus, then why did Lot serve matzahs? Why does Rashi say Pesach Hayah? What does that mean? Pesach, there was no Pesach. The answer is there was Pesach. Um, some even say, I, I was reading a piece this morning and quoted the name of Rav Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld and others that when, because it was Pesach the night that Yitzchak gave the brachas to Yaakov and Esav, really he meant to give it to Esav, and what did he ask for? He asked for two shnegedaye izim, two goats. And the Balaturim actually mentions it over there in Chomish as well. Why two goats? Like, who eats that much? I mean, he was like an old guy. Like, who, I, I could barely eat, like, you know, one steak, right? He's going to eat those two animals. Isn't that a little bit, uh, you know, fressing too much? So the Balaturim proves it from the Pesukim there. And he says, you know, one was for the carbon Pesach and one was for the carbon Chagiga because it was Pesach. And then when Esav came and he said, the real Esav came and he says, give me, I brought, I brought you food. Why wouldn't he eat from his food? Because Ein maftirin achra pesach once you finish eating the carbon Pesach, you can't eat anything more. Because just to show you again, this idea that the mitzvahs predate the reasons. And, and, and also because, and, and, and that's why he wanted Esav there, Dafka, because he wanted to bring someone who knew that maybe didn't, feel the same values that he had. He wanted to bring him in. He want, We invite the Ben Harasha to the Seder, nonetheless. We don't say, oh, get out of here. We don't say you're not invited. We say, no, please come. Let's have a conversation. Let's engage. Um, so really, there's a lot that's written about this. It's, 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 it's kind of, has, you have to shift the way you think about things, uh, but, but super, super important. So if it's something you wanted to maybe sit and learn over, uh, over Yantef, whatever. So um, I hope everybody's uh, preparations are going well. And um, I, I, don't, I doubt we'll be able to meet next week. I'm just, uh, you know, because probably too much to do. Um, when I say that, I mean that I'll be given too much to do. So, uh, but uh, I hope everybody's well. Have, if I don't, if you don't meet next week, have a wonderful Chag Kosh and um, I'll see you guys all soon enough. Are you Thank saying you. we're not meeting next week? I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. Because, you know, okay. I'm, I'm on like scrubbing duty and stuff. And I'm sure whatever appliance is about to break is, is, is happening soon, you know, because they, they only break right before you enter, you know that. The little guys inside the oven and the fridge and the whatever, they wait to say, okay, they have a calendar, they knew it was a leap year, and they're like, okay, okay, now, now we can break. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, if you need to get an appliance today, forget it, you know, you, know, you, you, might, as well, you might as well just. One of those people in my oven and one of those people in my washing machine. Yeah, always, always. It's like, you know, it's God's sense of humor, so. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Thank Bye. you for the Bye. name. Bye. Yes, and if I don't see you, have a great, have a great trip. Thank you very much. Thank please, you. please send me an email on the second day of Yontif so that I know that you kept. <laughs> okay. When I when no, I find after enough. the second day and I got an email from you, I want to know that you know I want proof. Tell us what you're doing, Dolores. It has to be both. It's not just that you're going to email, but you're going to tell us where you went and used yes. the money. I want, I want no, like no, a, I, I, like, all oh. right. Anyway, I, I think I know I'm staying in the hotel that day, but I will be. Nah, maybe, like, 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 like push the buttons on the elevator, do something. I don't know. <laughs> you know. It'll be a half and half, you know. Okay. Of. Very good. <laughs> we are, you know, we take baby steps. Yes. Yes. All right. I hear okay. you. All right. Thank you. Take be care. well, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Take care.